Know what day it is? It's 420, the International Do Some Drugs Day. Here at Ed's Auto Reviews, we are 420 friendly, so welcome. And I have a confession to make. I'm Dutch, alright? And that means a couple things. Yes, my country is flat. Yes, I ride my bike everywhere. And no, you cannot ask me to smoke weed this afternoon, because not every Dutchman is high all the time. Plus, I already have that crippling coke addiction going on, so... Yeah. You know who did like to hit the hay from time to time? Henry Ford. Welcome everyone to a laid back 17th episode of the Automotive History series, where we are going to take a closer look at the car that was made from drugs. Despite some controversies, Henry Ford was actually a pretty wicked dude, or a visionaire, if you will. In the 1910s, with the Ford Model T, Henry managed to mass produce cars and make cars for the mass market. At one point, Half of the cars in the entire world were Ford cars. And in the 1920s, Ford got the hang of selling things that moved horizontal. But what about things that moved vertical? Henry had this vision where every man not only owned an automobile, but also an airplane. The Ford Flyver was going to be the Model T of the skies, a mass-produced personal airplane for the mass market. As you can probably imagine, this idea went nowhere after a fatal crash with a prototype. But this goes to show that Henry Ford liked to dream big, and in 1941 he was at it again with a new idea. A car made from weed. A new idea from Ford. Ford 420, the new car made from weed. Ford 420, driving couldn't be more relaxed. Plenty of power comes from the all-new 420 cubic inch reefer V8 that runs on hemp fuel. Ford 420. Smoke the tires and the crowd will love you for it. Acceleration that hits you like a well rolled up blunt would do. Ford 420. How can cops stop you for the possession of drugs when your car is made entirely out of it? Drug running has never been this easy. Why drive drunk when you can drive high? Riding high, high riding. It is the Ford 420. Dope. And here is where I have to come clean with you guys. <laughs> clean. The car wasn't entirely made out of weed, instead it was made out of agricultural plastic. The agricultural plastic was made from a mix of wheat, corn, flax, hemp, the stuff that also gets used for making weed, and soybean. Now, the soybean part is what really sticks, as this car is often referred to as the soybean car, instead of the drugs or the weed car. And really strictly speaking, it is not even a weed car, as there are two types of strains, one that forms the basis for weed, and one that is used for making rope, or the agricultural plastic that was going to be used for this car project. I just destroyed my own clickbait title, didn't I? Anyway, one day Henry Ford had a bit of a smoke with Lowell Overly. High as a kite, they entered the open mind phase. Dude, we should make a car, man. But Henry, you're already doing that. No, 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 no dude, l l listen, listen. A car made from plastic. Whoa, dude. Awesome. Henry appointed Lowell Overly as the project leader. The idea was that the car would have a standard setup, like a tubular frame made from steel, an engine, transmission, etc, etc, but all the body panels were made from the agricultural plastic instead of steel, and the windows from acrylic sheets. Ford had a couple reasons to think that this was going to be a good idea. The first one is that Ford wanted to integrate agricultural industry with heavy industry. When Henry was little, he grew up on a farm, and he never forgot his roots. Essentially, it was his goal to, well, literally grow cars from trees, so to speak. Could you imagine him back at home? Dad, can you raise my allowance? What? Am I made of money? Do I look like I got a money tree in the backyard? No, but you got that car tree thing going, so I thought... You thought? You thought what? I guess you're right. There you go. Now go play outside. Jokes aside, it is worthwhile to investigate if you could make a car that is equally good as an ordinary car made from expensive steel, but is now made from very cheap and widely available produce. And that's what he did. As rumor has it, Ford bought some 12,000 acres of land to grow soybeans on. Adjusted for inflation, that's about 12,000 acres today. And that's about the size of Manhattan in New York City. Wow. 
The second one is that Ford claimed that this material was lighter, more durable, and a lot stronger and safer than conventional steel, but that's debatable. What is not debatable, however, was the car's weight. With only a quarter of an inch thick plastic, the car weighed about 25% less than its contemporaries. It weighed around 1,900 pounds, roughly the same weight as a 2001 Nissan Micra, for comparison. There is a video going around on the interwebs that shows Henry Ford himself hitting the soybean slash wheat car with a hammer. It is often misunderstood that the car he's hitting is the soybean car. In fact, what Henry is actually hitting is his own personal car with a piece of that new agricultural plastic glued onto the trunk. Henry tried to prove to the audience how strong and crash resistant the new material was, although he did use a hammer with a rubber boot. The third and last reason why he thought that this car was going to be a great idea is that since 1941, the war broke out and the US government preferred that all steel went to tank production instead of car production. Henry hoped that this new plastic would be a great alternative to steel so that it could keep on making cars during the war. But it is the same war that put an end to this story altogether. The project was set up in 1941. But in 1942, a year later, the US government ordered that all car production and related business, like this experiment, had to stop in favor of making war-related material. And that is the reason why this project suddenly ended. As you can see throughout this video, one model was made and showed at a local agricultural fairs. A second model was planned, but scrapped when the war started. So the only model that was made was destroyed and the blueprints and the formula for the plastic were sent to the archives. And when the war was finally over, everybody over at Ford had already long forgotten the project. This whole story is shrouded in mystery. Even today it is not clear as of what the formula for the plastic actually was, since the formula to make it is gone. Some say it is a mix of soybean, ham, and corn, etc, etc, what I talked about in this video, but others pointed out that the car was made of phenolic plastic, an extract of coal tar, and really there is nothing agricultural about coal tar. Modern day scientists question whether soy was even used at all, and that this magical plastic more resembles conventional plastic, like Bakelite, than anything else. The funny thing is, plastic is extensively used by the current day auto industry, Plastic is somewhat flexible and lightweight and is often used in non-critical or non-structural body parts. Even today's car interiors are just plastic fantastic. But what about the soybean? Well, once again, Ford never forgot its roots. Since the later 2000s, Ford announced that they would use soybean-based material for the production of air ducts, storage bins and the foam in car seats. What else is new under the sun? And what about actual weed? Well, as you can probably tell, no drugs is being used to create cars. But cars are being used to smuggle drugs. And according to the automotive website Drive Tribe, the number one pig for drug running is a Ford Flex. So, after all, things do come back full circle.